Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our final conversation this morning, like we earlier mentioned, is on the Greenfield students who are still in captivity. News broke yesterday that another two students had been killed. And of course, it's uh, important to have these conversations and see what must be done by the Nigerian government and the Kaduna State government to ensure that these set of Nigerians are brought back home. We're going to be speaking this morning with uh, a former director at the SSS, Mr. Dennis Amakri. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. It, it, it's been heartbreaking, um, heart-wrenching, whichever other word you can describe it with, uh, following the uh, details of this Greenfield kidnapping, mm -hmm. hearing also of another two students that have been uh, found dead or have been killed. Um, I want you, you know, you have years and years and years of experience with dealing with insecurity, dealing with intelligence gathering and all of that. Where do you think we might be failing these students, uh, you know, seeing how things have played out? Uh, we are not, uh, thank you for having me anyway this morning. Um, you see, we are not pursuing this thing systematically. We are doing a haphazard job, we're doing the right things, at the same time we're doing the wrong things, at the same time. So we don't have results. So this is the problem. Um, when I, what do I mean by that? Uh, this is a targeted violence uh, situation, whereby hostages were taken. And if hostages were taken, you know, the governor has come out to say that he's not going to pay ransom. I agree with him. Because when you pay ransom, you fuel them to go and buy more arms and do all kinds of things and come back again. But when you say you're not paying ransom, there are other things you are supposed to do. You just don't say, I don't pay ransom. And then you sit back. Because remember, when hostages are taken, the, 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 the objective of these uh, uh, kidnappers is to collect a uh, ransom. And if you're not taking, uh, if you're not paying them the ransom, then you have to put the heat on them. You have to put the heat on them. Whereby you either go after them or you don't pay them the money or you pay them the money and then of course, try to recover the money back from them. There are things that are supposed to be done. And these are not being done. Uh, we just say we're not paying the ransom. And then, of course, we allow them to be running around, killing the kids to show that if you don't pay the ransom, this is what we can do. And I think that is a very bad uh, uh, approach of what we're doing for now. Oh. And is that why you think we have an escalation of the kidnappings in Nigeria? The you know attack on Greenfield University is the fifth of such you know since December 2020, and you know we just keep having these abductions here and there. Students you know killed, two more students killed right now. Uh, you know information reaching us from the Kaduna State Government has confirmed. So like you mentioned, you either pay the ransom or you hit the terrorists hard. So when it seems like both options are not even being you know uh, implemented, do you think this is why? we're having escalation in, in, in kidnappings in, in Nigeria? Uh, definitely. That's why we're having the escalation, because um, ransoms were being paid before, including the Kaduna state governor. He has been paid. You know, and they feel that, oh, you don't want to pay now, then let us show you. We're going to, sh we're going to show you what we can do. You know, and it becomes a big problem. And there is an aspect that we are, they are also forgetting. The families, the families of these uh, hostages, in the, 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 the procedure is that you set up a team that will be liaising with the family and then make sure that, number one, they don't go behind and pay the ransom. Number two, you comfort them and assure them that you are going to get your, uh, their children back to them. I don't think this is being done because some of the parents are saying that uh, they've not heard about what is going on. Oh God, they are still urging the government to go and bring their children. And that is what the hostage takers are looking for. They want the parents to put pressure on government 
to pay the ransom. Hmm. You know, so these are things that need to be done systematically. And of course, in this particular case, a response team that will go for search and rescue should have already been in the field. Hmm. We cannot allow the kidnappers to be running around, killing some people, and then, of course, uh, making political statements. Hmm. We should go in there and rout them out. Okay, you, you mentioned that one of the challenges, you know, to this is when parents, you know, go behind the government and pay ransom. But when we put ourselves in the shoes of the parents or family members of these people, what option do you think they, you know, what other option do you think they might have when, you know, the governor, Nasir Arufai, makes statements as this, and, and, I, and I quote him, he says, we will not give them any money and they will not make any profit from Kaduna. So do you then leave your child in the hands of fate? That's what I'm saying. Don't give them money, but do something about getting the children out. You don't stop, you don't stop giving them money and then like sacrifice the children to them. Mm. So right. you, you, if you are not going to give them money, like you were giving before, then liaise with the security agents, let them go in there, isolate the hostages away from the or from the um, uh, kidnappers and bring back uh, the, uh, the 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 hostages. All right, Dennis Amari. And if you um, go and kill them all, uh, you have to think of the collateral damage that will happen. So you need the expertise, the tactical expertise of yeah. the security agents to right. go in there isolate them and do what they have to do. Well, then, we've had multiple, multiple um, um, opportunities to uh, do things like this, and it doesn't seem like we've done very well. We've, um, no, no, we also don't know the true picture of what happened with uh, Kankara and the Kagara uh, kidnappings, if ransom was paid or not, if it was um, because of the superior firepower of Nigerian security agencies. Nobody knows. Um, but of course, we, you know, we would always, as Nigerians, pray that the same thing that happened in those situations will happen here. But from your um, uh, security perspective, I, I want you to share with us how these things can be done. From a, you know, as a security expert, what are the things that we maybe need to have in place in order to um, carry out a successful rescue operation? Um, if we are aware of where these students are, do we need snipers? Do we need to be able to track where these phone calls are coming from? Do we need uh, to be able to block, you know, network in some of these places? We see some of these things in movies, but what are the things that we can try, um, you know, as a, you know, with, through our security agencies that we maybe don't have the equipment for? Uh, well, I think uh, rescue has been taking place uh, successfully in this country. The um, IRT group that uh, was just recently dissolved in uh, Porakot and somewhere else. Um, headed by uh, um, Kerry, yes. has done a very fantastic job. You know, they have tracked them down, you know, isolate, and then of course, nowhere to go in there and release hostages. Not once, not twice, and they've done a successful job, which even the National Assembly has appreciated. Yeah, but, um, so, why are we not using them? You know, why are we not using them? Because these guys are still there. Now, if it is equipment-wise, there are even new equipments that have come into play, whereby you can use drones, you can use technology in going in there, and then, of course, knowing exactly where they are. We did it with the United States people. Uh, United States Marine, who came here and then isolated a single hostage, brought him out and shot the rest of them and took their hostage back out uh, to freedom. They were assisted by Nigerian uh, 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 the, uh, security forces. And then I think they can do the same thing. So why, 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 why would about, you say we're not doing the same thing? That's what I mean. They are not being systematic about it. They are either rubbing politics into it, uh, making political statements, and then, of course, not dealing with the families, because the families are saying something else, 
the government is saying something else. We need dead assets. There should be a synergy. And of course, this, the, the, the families should trust the government that they are going to get it out. You know, so if you say you are not paying ransom, then go ahead and use all kinds of uh, avenues available to you. You know, in kidnap situations, the hardest part is to take the money. Is to take the money. It's not the kidnapping part. It's taking the money. And with that, you can have back notes. You can have back notes. So that if they take the money, you will follow the money and, of course, arrest all the people that are involved. These are things that can be done. Wow. You can track them by technology, isolate them from the hostages, and kill them if you want to kill them, and get the hostages out. But wow. don't be complacent about it where you allow them to feel that they are free, they can do whatever they want to do. Put the heat on them. I think that's where we are lacking right now. Well, um, we, we obviously lack you know, a lot in that department because um, you know, you would expect that when there's 50, 20, 30 citizens of a country in captivity, the whole country is expected to at least shut down until those people are free. But we don't seem to be you know, in that mood. Everybody seems to be going to work and living their lives like nothing's happening. Um, I, I, I want you to speak a little bit more on um, how you know, we can in any way possible ensure that there's no repeat um, also bear in mind that there is still about 25 or 29 students of forestry mechani uh, mechanization that are still in captivity um, even before the Greenfield incident happened and there's still no word about whether they will be released or not. Um, what can the Nigerian government do? What can the Kaduna State government do? I think number one we are going to get the same old cracked records that we're giving that there should be political will political will to do this. You are talking about uh, the mechanized uh, farming uh, students and uh, the Greenfield people. How about the Chibok girls? Chibok girls are still there. You know, Leah is still there. So you find out that there are people that are still uh, uh, in a, you know, in a, in a stage situation and the, the politicians are not doing enough because we, we have to forget about politics, especially when it comes to security. Let's forget about politics, religion, ethnicity, and all the rest and face it professionally. We have to face this professionally because if we continue, you know, uh, these, these uh, ragtag soldiers are, are playing games with us. And then, of course, uh, there are people who are suggesting, oh, let us go and get mercenaries. These are not rocket science. It just need dedication, and we can do it. We've done it before. The Nigerian security agencies have done it before. So there is no need to even think about uh, mercenaries to come from foreign countries to come and do it for us, you know. So it is very, very important that we approach this thing systematically. And when I say systematically, I mean let's follow all the processes of from abduction to release. And if we follow the follow these uh, processes and then of course coupled with crisis management uh, you know, in government. Because I still don't see any kind of crisis management team that has been put together that is addressing this position addressing this problem. We are still thinking of the military, but yes, if it is the military, at least there should be a group. And that is what the parents should be informed about. Look, would they set up government, have set up a team, and they are working on it. And then, of course, don't worry. Uh, so far, they've done this, they've done this. And the family will feel, you know, rest. But when you don't tell them anything, and nobody seen any positive result, instead of some dead students turning up, then we're escalating the situation. And then we remember, there are so many other schools in the country that are not protected. And then these bandits, 
are looking out for the loopholes where they will still attack more schools. Okay. Well. So I think we better get our act together. Uh, Mr. Macri, so do we know why kidnappers are targeting schools and, and students? Now, one thing, uh, there are uh, some, um, there are two, uh, two reasons for that. The first reason, which, you know, from our research, we, we've discovered that, um, you know, uh, some of these bandits are actually working with Boko Haram. And then, of course, who is Boko Haram? What does Boko Haram mean? Western education is forbidden. So, how do you make sure that Western education does not thrive? It's by making sure you kidnap the students, do all kinds of things, and then students are getting scared. Uh, parents are getting scared. The government is closing down schools. Many schools have been closed down in the north. And when the schools are closed down, what does it tell you? Boko Haram is winning. Hmm. That means their objective is succeeding. And then, of course, the second reason, again, they, they target schools is because these are young, impressionable boys and girls. They have parents who are emotionally attached to them. And if they're attached to them, what happens? They will be worried. And their worry and their cries will force government to go and do the needful. Either you pay ransom and then they release them to you. They go back and, uh, you know, kidnap some more students. It has been happening. So it's like a trend. It's like a trend. All right, Dennis so Margaret. these are the two reasons why they are targeting schools. Um, before we wrap up, in order for us to not hear um, of any other students from Greenfield killed in the next couple of days or weeks, um, is there any advice that you have to the parents and to the uh, Kaduna state government? Is there any word that you maybe can share um, to ensure that we you know, bring these kids home and nobody else loses their life in the period that they're in captivity? Uh, yes, of course. The Kaduna state government should hurriedly put together a team that will be a liaison between the families and government. Let them brief them on a daily basis so that they know what is going on. They will not be pressuring the government if the government is talking to them regularly. That's number one. Number two, the Kaduna state government should take advantage, leverage on the security forces. Talk to them. What are we doing to get this? How are we going to get these people out? And then, of course, what do you need? If they need anything, the Kaduna State government should supply it, give it to them, and let them go in there and do what they have to do. But just making political statements, we are not going to pay, and then, of course, allowing dead bodies to come out is, is not the right way to do it. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dennis Amakri, former director of the uh, DSS for speaking with us this morning. We, of course, uh, pray for uh, those students, and we hope that we have them home as uh, quickly as possible. Thanks for joining us once again. Thank you. And this is uh, where we wrap up the breakfast here uh, this uh, Tuesday morning, 27th of April. We hope that you enjoyed the conversations that we had. Our hearts go out to those families who have lost loved ones mm -hmm. uh, from Greenfield, and, of course, across the whole country. For everyone who, of course, is having those uh, dark days that never seem to end, we hope that uh, we um, see some light at the end of the tunnel as quickly as possible. Uh, we will continue to have these conversations, and we hope that they shed light on what possible solutions um, exist, and the Nigerian government can also take action here and there. If you missed out on any of this, remember to join us on our social media platforms. It's simply at PLOS TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel at PLOS TV Africa. I am... And I am Annetta Felix, wishing you a beautiful day.